convene. Okay, all in favor? Thank you very much. All right, so we have the privilege to have Emily Joseph Scar with us, and we wanted him to come to council because we had a variety of items that we wanted him to become uh, aware of. They are important to us in this town. I'm sure he wants to know what's important to us. And so uh, he had received a packet the same as we have. So, uh, Emily Scow, thank you for taking the time to come down from Edmonton today. That's a long drive. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time. So, as you could see in the background that was given to, mm -hmm. to you, yep. we have about eight different items that are important to this town, namely policing, mm -hmm. the cannabis exit tax, intermunicipal collaboration, AUMA meetings and access to ministers, renewable power centers, trade corrid corridor, Bill 7. This one is something that we really would like to get uh, a little bit more of your perspective on. And um, MSI, municipal funding, trying to understand where the government is at with this one. And the hospital and the community pasture, which we tried to address in the land use uh, bylaw. There was a question from Councillor Barnes, but it's inside there because we do have question as to how do we manage that notion of recreation and of use as a pasture? How do yeah. we do it when it's a public land? So I'm not so sure how you want to go about. Is there uh, something that you would like in particular to talk about? For example, Bill 7. Um, it's uh, Bill 7, what disturbed us with Bill 7 is a process mm -hmm. by which this bill was introduced. Uh, we felt that as municipality, we never had the chance to say what we foresee as issues with it. Uh, if you give the opportunity to some municipality or all municipality to give a tax benefit to some businesses that are coming to set up shop, it creates a playing field that's a little bit different for all of us. And so oh, I'm trying to understand exactly why the government went that route and had they foreseen the uh, issues that we foresee not only as a municipality, but as a municipality that is part of regional uh, economic development mm -hmm. organizations, where we are being pit one against the other and competing with each other, which is contrary to the notion of the uh, RIDA, which is to collaborate together for the benefit of the whole, with benefit to some uh, entity within that group, but not competing for the mighty buck. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'd like to start uh, before I answer that by just uh, thanking council for inviting me to appear before you. It's uh, it's always an honor uh, to be here um, in, in whatever capacity I'm, but today I, I am here as your MLA, uh, but with that in mind, you can refer to me however you feel comfortable. Joseph, Mr. Scow, MLA Scow, Scow, whatever works for you. I, I do firmly believe that I work for you, and um, and, and and I'm here at your pleasure. And it is certainly a uh, an honor to be here. I also, um, with regards to the, the travel from from Edmonton, it's a it's an occupational requirement, one that I'm used to. And but being here is is necessary for me. So I apologize that it's taking me months to get here. 
but it's not for lack of trying or, or lack of feeling of importance, but just uh, uh, other matters have been in the way that uh, we're pressing between session and family commitments. Um, I have read the briefing package, and I see that there's a lot in here, and I, I hope to give you some, some answers as much as possible, but uh, there are some things that will be a bit vague, not for any reason besides the government is still in the process of working out our financial situation. Uh, so uh, if my answers sound overly political, it's not deliberate, it's just me not having, frankly, all the answers at the moment. But I will, uh, but with, well, with regards to process, it is your meeting. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions as they come. And I'll start with, with Bill 7. Uh, this was a bill that, that uh, I don't have a lot of background on besides a general principle the government has taken. And that principle is to open up the province for new investment. Uh, this also goes all the way down to municipalities and giving them the opportunity to uh, leverage whatever, whatever um, advantages they might have to attract new businesses to their own to their, to their towns, their, uh, their counties, their villages, et cetera. So um, I don't have a lot of detail on Bill 7 for you, and I do apologize for that. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear your concerns on it and take it back to the Minister of Municipal Affairs because um, there have been some concerns around the bill, generally speaking, and I'm, and I'm happy to, to report back and be representative there on that. Okay, so if you saw the background summary on the Bill 7, you can see that we have quite a few concerns. So with regards to process, um, being that the government came into power on April 16th, uh, and we were all sworn in as, as MLAs around, and I think it was May 23rd, we had a very strict and rigid timeline. So the initial 13 pieces of legislation that came forward didn't have the opportunity to consult as much as other pieces moving forward. For example, in the fall, we have things regarding the uh, farm safety legislation coming out, some uh, things regarding education, energy, etc. So continual consultation is going on now for those pieces of legislation. But with regards to Bill 7, um, I, uh, again, I don't have a lot of background, but the lack of consultation wasn't out of, uh, was not uh, a slight against municipalities so much as a need to get these pieces of legislation uh, out. And, um, but again, I, I, I would like to get some more answers for you in this report back to you. Because this one is really disturbing us to tell you the <coughs> truth. Uh, Councillor Bengry. Mr. Scow, the concern of Bill 7 <coughs> mostly is the fact that it puts competition, a competing competition between municipalities now, let's say we have a municipality of 300,000 people, very rich municipality, trying mm -hmm. to uh, bid businesses their way, and here's a little municipality of 30,000 people who do not have the economic uh, conditions to be able to compete with the big ones. So... In, in all situations, when, when something like that happens, the person with the big bucks is going to win the bid, you know, regardless, because this opens the door to that. And we cannot, even our community, cannot compete with uh, uh, other communities that are larger than us, financially a lot more viable than we are. So... That's one of the biggest uh, problems with Bill 7. Okay. Councillor Cole. Um, I guess to just generally speaking, <coughs> I know Premier Kenny's big on the, the 100 days we've got this many out. Yeah. Our promises being kept. Uh, I guess maybe if, I, I would request that you take it back and say that's wonderful, but please take the due diligence to make sure everything's in line. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're trying to, but you can see the problem with Bill 7 for some smaller communities. It's not... We don't know if it's, we just don't feel the due diligence has been done to see the impact on everybody, that's all. So uh, it's great to have these political statements and say we're going to do this within 100 days and do it, but we also need to make sure it's being done properly. See, the worry for us is that when you uh, forgive taxes to a business on the long term, then you are asking the rest of the community 
to subsidize that new business, that tax will go up because you need the same revenue to run your place. So that essentially is where the issue becomes a big issue for a small community, which might not be the same case in that Edmonton area, Calgary area, Medicine Hat, Red Deer, etc., Lethbridge, might not be the same impact. For us, we impact it differently. And doesn't mean that we cannot attract people, but it's more difficult for us to forgive taxes. Much more difficult. So, Joseph, just to kind of give you a practical example, most of the surrounding communities that look at the corridor between the Lethbridge and Sable Island or Medicine Hat, they see all the agri-food, agribusiness going on in those corridors. And they kind of look at it with, I don't know, development envy. And even now with our memberships in regional initiatives like South Grow, we're trying to find our place and how do we get a hold of some of that. And uh, with, Bill C with Bill 7, it looks like they're just going to be able to establish even more legs up, if you will, on the rest of us because they already have mm -hmm. most of the things in place that we can't offer and then they can offer these tax incentives and on top of that. Wasn't something done similar to this, though, in the town of Nobleford? No, Nobleford is just running a real estate company. But the large factory in town was, was close to closing down. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure if they've applied it. So they... Yeah. They... they, they I, I, I believe they did something similar to this, and, and, they, and they got... Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd have to look at the case study a little more. I spoke with um, with their with their CAO a little bit about it, and Kirk, yeah, um, Hoffman, isn't it? Yeah, Kirk Hoffman. So I I, I understand the concern. I, I certainly think they are valid concerns. It does uh, make it difficult to compete with some of the larger municipalities. I will say that you know places like Edmonton and Calgary have their own set of problems, and but it doesn't change the fact that. Uh, the 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 purpose here isn't to compete against each other, but just rather to be competitive, and and to be attractive, and that's that is the hope here. So I'm uh, I, I'm happy to take these concerns back to the minister and see if I can get some uh, some clarification on some of this. Competitive is fine if it doesn't create a disparity yeah, between the advantages for municipalities. Mm -hmm. I, I am all for competitiveness. Mm -hmm. I understand. But I'm not for competition to the detriment of communities, communities that cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This Sounds may be good. a wrong analogy, but when we're talking about like this, I think of Amazon in New York City. They're offering them, they're not giving them money, but they're giving them subsidies. And they're at, their politicians chase that away, and there's 25,000 jobs. Now, that's the trade off to not getting the tax dollar, right? that there are going to be people paying tax to your community. But I understand also where we're coming from is that we don't have that opportunity to, to in the first place because we don't have the bucks to, to, to offer that to start with. So, mm -hmm. so it's kind of the Amazon thing. But, but I mean, it's, it's just a matter of process. I'm happy to hear that in the future there will be more consultation because even if at the end of the day Bill 7 is what it is, with some consultation, it creates a different kind of discourse. Mm -hmm. You at least can hear what small municipalities that you represent have for concern. Doesn't mean that the bill may not pass, mm -hmm. but it means at least we, we like to have the privilege to be able to let you know what our concerns are. Of course. And, and, not, and I... not after the facts, but before the fact, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah, and, and as this was coming through, again, I, I just defer back. There wasn't a lot of time for consultation, and fortunately, given the, um, the nature of the first session with the seven straight weeks, usually there is a break week in there where I can come back and, and, and visit with councils and, and kind of have that conversation. There, there really wasn't that. And so I, I, I don't believe the 100 days is so much like a talking point uh, as it is our government is trying to make sure we keep our word. Yeah, I mean, I mean that that's really the biggest thing here, and and we're not going to make everybody happy. I I totally understand that, but the problem is that 
I just keep hearing from people, you know, governments never, never keep their word. I mean, they never do it. And so this was what we were trying to do with, with these first pieces of legislation is show that in the campaign, we made significant promises. We had a enormous campaign uh, platform, something I've, in all my years of campaigning, I've never seen a 118 page document. Usually it's about five pages and a bunch of in infographics. So, you know, no surprises here, but uh, at the same time, I do understand your frustrations and, uh, and, and I'm happy to report back to the, to the minister and get some clarification or better understanding of the rationale. And maybe there may be some, um, you know, uh, maybe un unintended consequences. Uh, so. Well, I would like to make sure that I have foreseen what we are talking about yep. and that that felt on the yeah, absolutely. I'm long run, it's okay still to try it, but would have been nice to know. Now, there is another item also that uh, we are concerned about is the intermunicipal co uh, collaboration framework. Mm -hmm. Is item three there. And uh, I don't know how, how, how comfortable we are, you are with the intermunicipal municipal collaboration uh, framework that uh, municipalities are required to develop in conjunction with uh, the uh, county. But there are certain elements there that we feel are important and we don't want to lose mm -hmm. perspective of. And they are in a request, as you could see. Uh, first of all, in the background, there is one item that says there has been some discussion about the new UCP government softening the requirement position of ICFs. There is no evidence to support this, so this is why we like to know what the position is. It's simply a rumor, a rumor at this time, but since you're here, mm -hmm. help us understand what is the position of the government regarding ICFs. ICFs are very important to us as municipalities because it's a redis redistribution maybe of funding uh, it, to support the services that is given by the town and the infrastructure that is put up mm -hmm. by the towns in order to satisfy the well-being and the needs of the whole joint community. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I understand the importance of the ICF, uh, or, or the, uh, yeah. And so there has been no conversation that I've heard of regarding the ICF at this point. I have heard about the ICF and some of the concerns generally about it, um, one of which is certain counties' ability to generate revenue. That is... I think the reason why there is conversation around this, uh, you know, and, and so some some counties have the ability to to distribute more more resources to some of the towns, and some of them don't. Now there also might be some reasons behind that, as just mismanagement of funds. And I'm talking on a general scale across the province, not any municipality in, in particular. But that is the the main concern about the current model that I've heard, not from the government side, but just from uh, from you know from from counties and and towns is just necessarily which counties have enough money to actually share revenue and which ones don't and for whatever reason so from a caucus perspective from a government perspective I have not heard any conversation about this um, so there is no information to share on that uh, from a UCP government perspective but from my own conversations with um, with, with with some Reeves and and uh, and county councillors and town councillors it's just um, the, the model the model could be um, give a little more latitude for the for the communities to work between each other instead of have a set amount or percentage that needs to be shared each year. All right. So Councillor Sell, Councillor Bangri. Okay. Um, <laughs> MLA <Let me> <laughs> I'm gonna frame this for you, okay? Sure. Simply from a historical context. For years, we have gone to the county with requests for additional funds for different things, like <coughs> the library, like um, all of our recreation. And uh, the amount of contribution we receive from the county is a pittance based upon what the actual costs are. And every time we go there with our hat in hand and say, please, sir, I want some more, 
we always get a resounding no. Mm -hmm. So this time we have the leverage to actually go to them and say, you can't just say no anymore. Because if you don't, we're going to arbitration. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want, is we want the hammer this time and not have to go there with our hat in our hand. Because every time we have, we have come away thoroughly disappointed. And they have given us virtually nothing to help with all the resources that we have to invest into these various things that they pay nothing for but have the opportunity to use it. So, I think I've pretty much said it as best I can. We should add that a third of our, uh, around a third of what gets used in town is, is used by county residents. Oh yeah, look, I, I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound as if I'm defending one position or another. I'm, I'm just simply answering the question saying there's been no conversation about it. Right. And, and the concerns on either side is yours from a, from a town perspective and from a county perspective, do we have the resources to share? Okay. So I'm not, I, I'm, not, I'm not stating a position at all. I'm simply saying I haven't heard anything. And your concerns are, are absolutely well-founded because when you talk about Carson, for example, what, what percentage of, your, of our town resources are used by those who don't live in Carson proper. So I, I see where you're coming from. Concerns are, are, are certainly well founded. Our forest, 25% of our tax revenues pay for our recreation infrastructure and programs. Just a follow up comment there. Please don't listen to all the poor boy stuff you hear from all the counties across the province. I've, I've got counties who are, who, are, who are happy to give far more than they're expected to, right? So I'm, I'm saying there are those who are. Huh? Who, who are very happy to to participate and those who aren't well I'm again I'm not I'm not hear the poor boy routine from the county all the time and uh, we're and, tired of hearing that and I can't speak to that I, I really can't all, all I'm simply saying is you know I I've I've traveled the province a lot and I've heard you know uh, concerns from both sides and I understand concerns on both sides but I also realize that both sides need to be able to exist particularly the towns where you have denser populations so well, we, we just hope for a fair settlement, let's put Certainly. it this way. And uh, something that makes sense also within the limitations, but something that makes sense. Sure. Councillor Bangri. Emily Scout. <coughs> There's a, something else to an ICF. And we, we, <coughs> we got it in our agenda package. You probably have never experienced it yet or heard of it yet. But to me, it's a very, very serious situation, hoping that our government of Alberta will step into this and go to bat. And that's a letter from the GST taxation department that uh, to Peace River, mm -hmm. that they got their, their IMDP all together they were audited for their GST, and the audit come up six hundred thousand dollars to be repaid they, to be paid by 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 these two resources when they've gone through the whole exercise of collaborating and sharing costs. And so all of a sudden, you know, where would we get some money like that? And they've they've wrote the AUMA, the FM, uh, FM FCN. FCN, and RMA and, and NADEC. But I hope that as as our MLA, you will carry this forward. That this cannot happen. The the federal government needs to stay the hell out of our business <laughs> as far as GST is concerned. <laughs> Councillor, that's their tax. <laughs> I'll let you address that with Justin Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. But I, I think I, as I, a province, it would be very important for uh, a government to uh, really state a position in order to protect municipality from those incredible tax grabs, really. Now, Mr. Scott, if that's talk. not in your in your packet, I'll be more than happy to, to sure. give you my copy of this letter. Jeff, is that in the packet? No. Uh, yeah, if you could, that'd be really great. Would you like to take a break for a few ten minutes and we can, uh, there's a food over there that is waiting for us all and uh, we could carry on our discussion and... 
Well, I, I uh, have learned very quickly in a family of six kids, don't stand between anybody and food. So <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to take a yeah, quick break. Yeah, we here. have some that are fading away here at the table. <laughs> okay, would you like Certainly to Certainly fading make? away here. Go ahead. Make a... a okay. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, we're thankful for the food that's been provided for us and pray for the blessings upon it and that'll do us good and that we might continue our conversation and have the spirit to be with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. So if you want to grab something, thank you, Shem, for bringing it over. But we need to... Do, do you want to recess or do you want to carry on uh, working? Okay, recess. It's the working lunch. Okay. Yeah. No, that's what I want to do. I want to carry on. <laughs> Okay, go get whatever you need. I, I apologize for my verbiage, Mayor. What, yeah, please. What did you order? Thank you. you. I didn't order anything.